to think back on the time in my life where that was something that I would do, where um, harming myself in that way was a choice for me. And thinking back on how I felt mentally at that time, there is no question in my mind that I will be on Mandaro, Zepbound, some form of AGLP1 that turns that spot in my brain off for the rest of my life. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for another video today. Today's video is going to be a little bit more lighthearted, sort of diving into the trenches of what GLP-1s have done, can done, will do for me, for possibly you, for everybody. Um, I know the past like several videos that I've uploaded have been a little bit more like news stories and anxiety and all of the things that are going on in the compounded terzepatide world right now. And so today I wanted to do something a, a little bit different and talk some more about feelings that are good ones, okay? So this all actually started um, the other day when I was asked by my daughter's school to go through and find some pictures um, of her as she was younger. I guess they're doing a project or something and so they wanted some some pictures. So I'm, you know, sitting down, going through my, uh, my pictures on my phone, and I come across this photo from 2019. This photo was taken in June of 2019 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, when we were there on a um, vacation. My sister actually lives there, so we were all there visiting her. Um, so that picture sort of brought all of these feelings on me. And I didn't realize until, um, in that moment, what those feelings meant at that time and how it is so drastically different now. So to tell you a little bit about that girl, that girl was freshly coming off losing 40 pounds through diet and, and natural exercise, natural diet, exercise, whatever. Um, I had lost 40 pounds and I weighed about 200 at that time. I actually was pretty excited because right before I went on that vacation, I weighed um, under 200. So I was like 199. I was so excited, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have a cheat week on this vacation. I'm going to eat whatever I want. You know, the old like dieting mindset that we all I'm sure know of and have struggled with our whole life. Um, so I go on that vacation and live in life, whatever. Two months later, I find out that I was pregnant with Finley, who is my youngest, who was a surprise. So then I go through the cycle of being pregnant, gaining 50 pounds, not losing that 50 pounds after pregnancy, yada, 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 until we get to November of 2022 when I start my GLP-1 Manjaro journey. Now, what I wanted to really touch on was like a brain thing. So I get asked quite often, why I don't just stop the medicine now at this point. I've been on it for almost two years. I've lost the weight that I want to lose. Why am I still on it? Why am I still putting myself through paying for it, trying to find it, especially now with compound? Why don't I just stop? And I've never been able to come up with an answer that I felt like was sufficient like I know what my answer is, but I've never been able to articulate it in such a way that it made sense, that I felt like it was gonna come across the way that I meant it until I saw that picture. So when I saw this picture, this flood of emotions hit me. And I remember the spot mentally that I was in at that time. And that spot was, I'm gonna gain all this weight back. If I slip up for a week, for two weeks, if I don't count calories, if I don't count calories enough throughout the week, if I eat too many calories a few days this week, if I spiral and I don't exercise, I'm going to gain all of this weight back. And that is where my mind was. That's where my mind lived. And I'm sure all of you know exactly what I am talking about. Every time I would go on a diet and I would lose 10 or 15 pounds, I inevitably would gain it back because I would go off the diet, go back to eating normal, and I would gain all of the weight back. And that was very much my mindset at that time. I'm gonna gain this back. I can't, I don't wanna do this again. I was so anxious about it. Fast forward now to two years late. Oh, well, since then it's been 
for over four years, five years. Wow. It's been over five years since that point now at this time. And that is where, that is how GLP has allowed my mind to shift. I no longer have that obsession over food and the obsession that if I eat bad for a day or two, I'm going to gain all this weight back. I don't have the constant thinking about food, wanting food, deciding what I'm going to eat next. I literally don't even think about food until it's time to eat it. And then I'm like, oh, okay, well, what am I going to eat? And it's not a big deal if I eat something not as good because I know I'm going to get food again. I'm much more rational in my decision making regarding what I'm going to eat and all of that. But the biggest thing is that I don't fear now that I'm going to gain weight back. I can rationalize that if I eat this slice of cake today, that doesn't mean anything. I don't have to continue eating cake. I don't have to continue eating fast food and all the bad stuff, candy and cookies and cake and whatever. I don't have to continue eating that if I eat it one day. Whereas before I would eat a piece of cake or whatever. Say we were going to a birthday dinner or whatever. I would go and I would have in my mind, if I'm going to eat the cake, I might as well eat the bad meal as well. And I might as well get a drink and I might as well um, stop and get some candy on the way home because I've already ruined the day at this point. Whereas now in my mind, I can say, okay, I'm going to have cake tonight, which is fine. I enjoy cake. I haven't had cake in three weeks. I'm going to enjoy this piece of cake, but then the rest of the day going leading into it, I'm going to eat normal. So when people ask me, why don't I just stop? Why don't you just stop taking, um, Terzepatide, Manjaro, Zepound, whatever. That's the reason that I want to give because it takes away from me. Not, on, not only does it make me less hungry, but it takes away from me the constant worry and fear that I'm going to eat the wrong thing, not exercise enough, gain all of the weight back. And that is a spot that I lived in for many, 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 many years my whole life pretty much since I was old enough to know what weight loss was. And that's a spot that I don't want to ever go back to. And so when you ask me if I have fears of, you know, thyroid cancer or fears of what the side effects might be in 10, 20, 30 years, or scared of like the bowel incontinence, all of that, my answer would be no. I do not have fear of the things that could happen because I like to live, I am one that likes to live my life in the now. And I have developed that mindset on life through a very rough upbringing and backstory to my life. I have developed the thought that I have to live for today, for now, in that I am choosing what is best for me and for my life right now in this moment. And that has not done me wrong so far. I live that way um, in my marriage. I live that way. I mean, in my marriage, it's more so what is best for our, our marriage, our unit at that time. But, you know, in my marriage, in our finances, in every, in my friendships, in my relationships with everybody, that's how I choose to live. And so I am not somebody who likes to fear things that may or may not happen. I will worry about them when they happen. I will worry about them if they happen. I will worry about things such as, uh, you know, cancer or long-term side effects when we actually have real data that leads to believing that that's actually a possibility. If somebody actually develops cancer that was not a rat that was on Manjaro, um, then I think is the time to worry about it. The time to worry about my brain and the time to worry about how I function as a human and as a mother and a wife and a caregiver and a content creator, that is now. And I know that I can best function on Manjaro, on Terzepatide, and I have no intentions of going off of it. And I feel like 
after much thought and much processing, I can finally provide an answer that makes sense for me and in my whole body and what I want to share. And that is, I don't want to ever go back mentally to the point where I was constantly worrying about what I put in my mouth and if I was gonna gain weight and if I ate that piece of cake, am I gonna weigh four more pounds tomorrow? I was at a point at one time where I weighed myself literally every day. I was at a point one time y'all, and this is really getting deep and we can do a full story time on this. If you want one, let me know down below. But there was a time period after Bryson, who is my oldest, um, he's 13, almost 14 ugh, now, but there was a time period where I literally would make myself throw up. I worked um, in healthcare at that time. And a lot of times I would work a second shift. And so I would go to work and I would get a big salad or something from the, the cafeteria and I would eat it. And then I would make myself, I would purge it. And that is something that I'm not proud of, but that is where my mind was for a very long time. And that carried over for several, several years, not consistently, not that it would ever be like, um, classified, I don't think as a disorder because it would be like months where I wouldn't do it. And then, um, one night I would eat a lot or we would go for Mexican and I would, you know, drink a margarita and eat a bunch of chips or whatever. And so then at the end of the night, I would say, I need to get rid of this. And, and so I would. And so to think back on the time in my life where that was something that I would do, where um, harming myself in that way was a choice for me. And thinking back on how I felt mentally at that time, there is no question in my mind that I will be on Manjaro, Zepbound, some form of AGLP1 that turns that spot in my brain off for the rest of my life. And I have no qualms saying that um, because for people who understand what I'm saying, I totally believe you're going to be like, oh yeah, that's definitely how I feel. And I feel like a lot of the times when I get the comments on why don't you just stop? Why are you doing this to your body? Why do you need this medicine? Why can't you just diet and exercise? I feel like those are people that A, aren't necessarily on a GLP-1 and B, maybe didn't have that same mental aspect that I did if they are on a GLP-1. Um, but just no matter what the reason, if you want to stay on your GLP-1 for the rest of your life, that is not anybody's business but yours. And I think that's also a very important point to make. Like, it's not Jim Bob's business what medicine you put into your body and you do not have to tell anybody that you're even on a GLP-1 um, if you don't want to. So I really felt inclined to make this be the topic of today's video with so many people struggling right now to find their medicine and get and stay on it. I feel very um, sorrowful for the people who are just beginning their journey or are in the middle of their journey and they haven't quite gotten to the point yet where I am, where I feel so at peace with who I am and my body. I feel very sorry for the people that are in such anxiety and are not able to um, have the assurance that they're going to be able to continue on. And that's why I make those videos updating, you know, on the news and the lawsuit and things that are going on with it, because I want people to be as informed as possible. Um, and that is one way that we can do it. You know, I don't believe that we're always going to get the... <clears throat> I feel like one spot that I feel like content creators really fit well into this little, you know, empty hole in the media world is that sometimes when you get news outlets or whatever, um, you're getting a cropped, curated piece of information. Whereas, um, for the most part, the content creators that I watch are straight giving you the info as they can see it, they are finding, they're digging and they're finding screenshots of emails and they're calling people and they're writing and they're emailing and they're finding things out um, that 
maybe aren't reported in the same way in the media. So I think that influencers have a very important little um, slot in this in this journey that we can really benefit and spread realism if we so choose to. And that's always my my goal here and to do so in a kind and respectful way, um, which is why when people comment on my videos, I always, you know, comment back in the most factual, accurate, but respectful way that I can, because I think that um, ultimately being kind to everybody is the best option anyway, because um, you don't know what people have have been through. And not everybody knows what I have been through. And so I, sh I try to share here as much as I can. So um, if you do want a more in-depth video of the history of all of the things that I, the bomb that I just sort of dropped, let me know down below. Um, you know, mental health, I think is a pretty decent part of this whole thing. Um, I don't think that in the beginning people realized how much the GLP ones were going to alter your, your brain and your hor the hormones in your brain and how you were going to start thinking, acting, doing things differently than you had always done them. I think in the beginning, it was just like a appetite suppression. It'll make you not as hungry. And that was sort of what everybody thought. And as time has gone on, we've started to realize that no, like it's literally altered the way that my brain thinks about most things. I would say, um, my brain, the Brittany in my head <laughs> is a totally different Brittany than that picture that you saw in 2019. And I don't want to go back to that brain. And so I think that talking more about the mental aspect of what GLP-1s do is really important. So I invite you in the comments to share your stories and share how life has changed for you in the time that you have been on GLP-1, especially in regards to your mental health. Um, I really look forward to that conversation. It's a conversation that I want to open more of and talk more about that. I hope that I can do, um, justice to. So definitely let me know down below what your thoughts are on that. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to see a little bit more into me, um, because I, I do always try to be real here. And yeah, I'm literally looking at a mess right now on my desk. Fun fact, one of my big, um, I have lots of hobbies. I'm a very like creatively outlet person. Um, it's like a calming thing for me. But anyway, my current thing is clay. And so I have all of these clay things sitting here that I've made. These are going to be candles. That's another thing I'm trying is candle pouring literally right here is five pounds of beeswax. <laughs> that I'm going to be uh, making into candles in these after I think the, the varnish is sealed. Yeah, we're doing things here. I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm somebody who really um, likes to be creative as a way to calm my mind. So anyway, I'm staring at this mess that I now need to clean up. I literally have like five journals over here as well, like all of the things. So um, let me get to it, I guess. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. And just know that I am with you guys. I'm always here. I'm always with you. Shoot me an email if you need to talk. I will do my best to speak to you in a kind and respectful way. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you soon. Bye.